Welcome to Life with Lori. We are on the Phoenix set in Studio C. Today, Lori continues with special guest and dear friend, Susan Moore, who is a mama, wife, life coach, and trainer. And now here's your host, Lori Graham Baker. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is day two with my one of my dearest friends in all the world, one of my best friends. You hear me talk about her on the Jim Baker Show a lot. I'm sending Susan this book, sending Bobby, my childhood best friend that I grew up with. I'm always talking about you too, Susan. You didn't even probably know that. Here's Susan. She's back with me today. I'm so excited because God's just got us on a flow where the Holy Spirit is just leading us, and Susan came actually came in today and really uh, ministered to me at a time I needed it. You know, just because you're in ministry work doesn't mean you have it all together. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you what. Yeah. Yeah, that it doesn't mean that at all, or everybody in your family has it all together. I know, Susan, even right now, was, I'm sitting next to you, and we're going to get right back in, and I'm going to share with you what I told you I was going to share with you last week. If you missed last week's episode, you can go to the uh, Go to our app, our new app, the PTL app, and you can download it. It's for free. It's wonderful. You can see it on the screen. And you can watch all the recent episodes of Life with Lori. You can watch. See, there's some right there. That's great. I just saw Cindy Jacobs. Listen, I've even had Rabbi Jonathan Kahn on mm. my show. I've had so Amazing. many different people. Yeah. It's just yeah. been such an honor this last year. Just had Anne Graham Lotz Amazing. and so many great young prophets of the Lord I've mm -hmm. had on. But today I get to have my best friend. You know, she's, she's just, you know the thing about you, Susan, and I even said this to Jim, I think it was last night. I said, um, you know, the thing about Susan is we've never had to work at our relationship. No. And I think I was, act, I was actually telling that to Lynn, too. I go, and Lynn goes, that's what a real friend is. Mm -hmm. I go, you know, I kind of lost a lot of people along the journey of meeting and marrying Jim Baker yeah. and then adopting all the kids from the inner city, which you were with me, mm -hmm. the very first day that we met all of our kids. Yeah. Well, little Lori wasn't even born yet. She no. was in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the womb, literally. <laughs> and, um, but, but we didn't have to work at yeah. it. And you were just always there. I was just always there. And then one day, all of a sudden, we really realized we're both in southwest Missouri, a couple hours apart from one another. <laughs> in the hills. In the hills. <laughs> Never would yeah. have dreamt it, Never. picked it ourselves personally, but God did. And here we are today just sharing with you. But Susan, you were talking about you're a life coach. Mm -hmm. you, you help train people, work them out. Yeah. I need you to come over here and help train <laughs> me and work me out and give me some pointers. Yeah. I know Jim and I yeah. both need. If there's one thing we need, we need a personal trainer to help us physically because mm -hmm. we're giving so much out yes. ministry wise and stress wise there is stress mm -hmm. when you're running an organization Absolutely. for the ministry so keep us in your prayers but mm -hmm. but we do need to work out more because yeah. you're talking about the core the core and you know again the angle that i'm coming from is that there's always benefits to working out if you yeah. eat right yes and we do and you work out you will have physical tangible results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as we've talked so many times, that is not what sustains you. No. It's the inner, inner man. So if we spend, I, I tell my clients, I'm like, you know, as hard as we're working mm -hmm. here in the gym, mm -hmm. we equally need to work as hard. And when I say work as hard, I mean, just put forth the effort and maybe effort for you is your effort is being extremely vulnerable. Right. Right. And again, also be very wise in who you choose to do that with. But if yes. you'll ask the Father, he will send you somebody that you can he, walk that journey and go through that process with you. And you know, it's so interesting you say that because just recently on the Jim Baker shows and even on Life with Lori, well, for instance, we had Anne Graham Lotz. The amazing thing about Anne is that she was very vulnerable in her book um, that, she, that she wrote, Jesus in Me, and it's all about the Holy Spirit oh, I love and that. how the Holy Spirit is our, he, he's our comforter, he's our yes. friend, he's our, he's constantly is the one, our companion, he's our mm -hmm. constant companion in every way, shape, and form. She literally teaches about it. It's, it's the book, Jesus in Me. You can go to Jim Baker's show and order that book. Um, Paula White Kane was mm -hmm. on the week before, and her book, totally vulnerable. And these are people in ministry. These are people who have been through a lot in mm -hmm. life, as I have been. And my heart's desire, Susan said it last week to you, but it's true. My heart's desire for this show is to be vulnerable, is to tell, talk to you and just say this. 
if God can use me, he can use anybody. Uh-huh. All I said, I, I can remember being in, we met in, in ministry school. This is kind of a funny little story. This is Susan. Let me tell I'm going to tell on you a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. Here. I'm an open book. Okay. I'm going to tell on you a little bit. It's kind of cute, cute little story. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> you'll oh you'll boy. remember it. Um, it's truth, truth. So um, we went to what's called Master's Commission, Phoenix First Assembly, back in 1990. So that's a long time ago, almost 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was 30 years ago I got saved in 1989. Loved it. You know, Easter Sunday is the best day of my life. And um, then I find myself a call of God in my life, didn't know what to do with it. Then I watched this, this ministry school right there at our church called Master's Commission. So I sign up for it, but it's basically kids that are in their like 18, 19, 20 years sure. old, Just college out of high age, school. Mm-hmm. out of high school, right? And I'm like 31. And, I, I'm, and then they had to live by faith. And I'm like, <laughs> but I like hair and makeup and nails. And how am I going to live by and clothes? You know, I like fashion. Yeah. How am I going to live by faith and have anything? You know, God is so good. He was so faithful yes. all, through all of that. When I just said, yes, mm-hmm. Lord, that's what I'll do. And so, because it was like seven days a week. We might get Mondays off if we were lucky, remember? And it wasn't pretty. No. And it, it was behind the scenes, uh, it, dirty, hot, hot. desert sweat. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> hardcore <laughs> ministry on every level. And so um, the very first day, the night before, actually, we were to show up on a Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Out by the fountains. Out by the fountains. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Saturday night, I struggled very hard. I mean, literally had somebody offer to marry me, take me away to California and start our own (laughs) ministry. (laughs) Literally the night before. And I thought about it for a second. Mm -hmm. Like that sounds good. That's a way out. And I can do my ministry work and go to Southern California on the beach. It'd be cool. Uh, But I didn't. I showed up at 8 a.m. I was up the whole night before. But I got dressed, had my dress on, <laughs> got ready for church, showed up. We get in this like circle. And there was, I don't know, maybe 30, 35 of us. New first years. First year huh? students. We're at the, Lloyd has us get in a circle. And I remember, I, this is probably one of the first times I actually heard God's voice in my spirit. And said, see that girl right there? I looked over. It was you, mm-hmm. Susan. <laughs> The one with the scowling face. Yes. <laughs> and, I didn't want to be there. And, there. and he said, she mm-hmm. is going to be your lifelong friend. Yeah. So I go over after. I'm like, hi, <laughs> I'm Lori Cram. Nice to meet you. What's your name? She's not into it. You were. Like, I was already planning my bolting escape plan. She so. was. And her mother was right behind her. <laughs> your precious mother. And your mom was so sweet. And you were like, I could see in her eyes, she was not into this. But what did God do? He put us on the same bus route. We were in the inner city working all the time. God was dealing with you. God was dealing with me. Went through a lot of deep inner healing mm-hmm. that first year. Like we mentioned, and like I've shared with you many times, went through five abortions when I was young in my teens and my 20s and uh, in a horrible marriage, a crazy life and all the healing that that needed to come from all of that. And um, on our faces before the Lord all the time, we're, I was always running to the altar. I cried a lot during those You first were running years. to the altar. I was running out the door. That's true. She was <laughs> running out the door a few times. And she would drag me. You see this Bible right here? <laughs> It's this true. is true. truly a spiritual weapon. Yes. And kind of was a weapon for Lori <laughs> as well. Was. Because I was, She'd have her big old Bible. I, I have my Bible weapon. all the time. And I was the one sitting <laughs> up front. Yes, I'm that person. Yes. I'm yeah. that person no, with I'm the thankful. Bible. Because I <laughs> so took thankful. it so seriously. Yeah. And I still, mm-hmm. I take it more serious today than ever before. But I will tell you. We are talking about inner healing Uh and how you have to actually let God go there. He's got to go in because he already knows all this. He already knows. What is it that we think that by suppressing or hiding or I I don't know what that is or why we're so afraid. Um, There's a scripture that says to go boldly to the throne. Yes. It doesn't say to crawl and to beg and to. Our father says when you mess up. Yeah. All I want you to do is just get up 
and run to me. That's it. When I was in such a bad place, my dad always told me, he said, you know what? You see that front door right there? Mm -hmm. No matter where you are, mm -hmm. no matter what you've done, mm -hmm. that door is wide open. And when you walk through that door, yes. you walk into safety. That's right. And unconditional love. It's true. We dealt with things when oh, I got yeah. inside that door. Oh, yeah. But we dealt with it without shame. Right. And we would deal with an issue and he would always look at me and say this. Now, when you walk back in mm -hmm. around the rest of the family, mm -hmm. I don't want you to hang your head in shame. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to act like you have to pay penance for something. We've dealt with it. Right. That's so now good. we're going to go on. Yes. We're going to go forward. It's true. And that is a concept that I feel like so many people don't even understand that concept. That's right. And but you had to start with all of your all my stuff, stuff. <laughs> and finally get to that point where you're mm. like, I am going to lay everything, my vulnerability on yes, the ground. Yes. I'm going to say, God, here I am. Yes. You could take me or break me. That's right. Anything. And then that was the beginning for you. That was the beginning mm -hmm. for me. And I, and I shed a lot of tears and I, yeah. a lot of forgiveness. And the hardest thing was to forgive myself. First and foremost. I mean, absolutely. and I can remember the day I forgave my ex-husband mm -hmm, and sitting sure. in church and all through everything we'd been through. And I felt like a thou, you know, a hundred million pounds were lifted off of mm -hmm. me and started praying that he would have a blessed life and he would know Jesus as his personal yeah. Lord and Savior. All of that. I, I just remember though, how could I forgive myself? Sure. But then I got to that point where I was able to forgive myself. And little by little, like you were saying, the un, like an onion, all yes. the, I don't think I could, all the layers, I could have never just had God deal with it all at one oh, time. No. So here I am 30 years later. This is what happened to me just the mm -hmm. other night. I'm going to say it was about two, three weeks ago now. Not even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Not even, I don't even, it was just Father, God, Holy Spirit. All of a sudden... I don't know. I was just having a moment where I was thinking about my five abortions, my five children that are in heaven who are there eternally. Thriving. Thriving. Yes. So if you've ever had an abortion, Thriving. I want to say this to you. They're, they're alive. They're in heaven. They're waiting for you. I've had supernatural experiences, and someday I'll share even more mm -hmm. of that with you. But I knew I had had another child. And it was a miscarriage. Oh, wow. And God literally took me back mm. to where it happened. Mm -hmm. I, I <laughs> went outside. I sat down by you myself. I kind of suppressed. Like, I suppressed you it. You had suppressed that. I suppressed yeah. it, but I knew it was in there. Yeah. I knew I already had the child's name. And I remembered where I was. Wow. It was like he, the Lord literally took me back to that house party. Mm -hmm. We called them back in the 70s. You went to house parties. Took me into the bathroom wow. of this house mm -hmm. party. And it was after my second abortion. And I remember I went to the bathroom and I looked down at the toilet and there was the baby. Mm -hmm. And I scooped it up, held it in my hands. I could see. It was a little baby. Mm. And then I let it go and flushed the toilet. I always knew there was a sixth child. Wow. And I always, I always knew his name, David. Yeah. His name is David. And David mattered. And David mattered. And David still mattered. But it took, yes. it took 30 years yeah. of a lot of healing. Yeah. And a lot of grace and mercy and and I cry and cry mm -hmm. I mourned I cried I grieved this is I'm talking you guys this is just literally a few weeks ago that God did that wow and you know Lori isn't that something and, and beautiful you, yes and don't you think that every time this is like we're sitting in our living room I know I hope you feel the same way as yeah. you're talking today yeah Every time that God heals you that layer at a time, mm -hmm. you learn more and more that healing doesn't come with shame. That's right. So he's like, okay, we've been through a long process here with your five abortions. Mm -hmm. Now my little girl, I think of your dad. No, girl. my dad used to always call me little girl. Now my little girl. Yeah. 
We've got another little layer that we need to visit here. That's right. And you're going to cry and you're going to grieve. Yeah. But you're going to not feel shame. Right. No, there was no shame. No, there's no shame. It was not from the broke, father. It broke my heart. You of know, course it broke, it broke my your heart. heart. Of course it did. But I was like, this is so beautiful that, you know, when I woke up the next morning, mm -hmm. I thought, what a beautiful thing you did, Lord. Yes. I remember I had a very good sleep that night. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best sleeps I'd had in a long time. Yeah. Because I was finally, I finally was able to recognize mm -hmm. that child that, and that child know that I recognized it. Because, yes. you know, I really, you know, believe it or not, I believe in the supernatural. <laughs> Supernatural's natural. Yeah. Did you know that? Is that how you say it? Totally. I mean, really? I always think that, I always tell people, and this, some of you may sound a little weird out there, but actually, supernatural means like eternal. There is yes. no beginning, there is no end. That's right. So if you are a believer that believes in eternal life, yes. then Honestly, the, our life that we live as, as compared to a vapor in the right. word. That's it. Is really supernatural, but it is not even the reality as much as supernatural is. That's right. It really is. You know, supernatural God created supernatural humans. That's who right. live on the supernatural earth. I mean, how we live and breathe, that's all. It's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. You know, yeah. like for Jim, for instance, my husband, he doesn't know when he meets somebody or anyone's around him, you know what he knows? He knows their spirit. He reads yeah. their spirit before he looks at them physically right. and sees the physical person. Right. He, he sees the person. Yeah. It, it's so Which amazing. Which is what Jesus did. It's what Jesus did, exactly. That's why he could look at the worst of the worst or mm -hmm. the appearingly best of the best. Oh, and there the word is appearingly. Appearingly. <laughs> appearingly. And we've all been, I've had that appearance mm -hmm. that I wanted people to think that I was really on my A game. Oh, and on the too. inside, I'm reeling. Right. Spiraling. Yes. Um, I want to go back to mm -hmm. something really quick that you said, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Oh, no. To about acknowledging, was mm -hmm. it David? David. Okay. Yeah, and, and I always knew his yes. name. It was always inside yes. of me. And, and I like, think with shame in, in our society, whether you're in the Christian world or you're not in the Christian world, mm -hmm. um, that comes with abortion. Right. Abortion and, and miscarriage, I think, they're, they, they're loss, but they're a little different type of loss. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're still loss. Yes. And um, I, God showed me, it's been a couple of years ago, to get closure with something, you can't just shove it in the closet. No. We talked about that last time we were together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're out there today mm -hmm. and you've had an abortion, yeah. or you've had multiple, like Lori, you've had five abortions, yeah. or you've had multiple miscarriages. One of yes. the little girls I'm training now, she's had two miscarriages. One was, could have easily lived outside of the womb, mm. but there were complications. And... This little girl that I talked to, she's actually in master's commission. She had had an abortion mm -hmm. and felt so guilty because she was in this ministry program. And here she was supposed to be this powerful, super, you know, oh, millennial yeah. leader girl. And yeah. she said, I don't know how to close this out. Yeah. And literally, I shared this with you. Holy Spirit downloaded into me. I had never said these words out of my mouth and never had the thought. So there's no way it came from me. Mm -hmm. But I began to talk to her and I said, you know. Why is it when we miscarry or we abort, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense in our being that that child never existed. Right. Our body knew it existed. Absolutely. And something the Holy Spirit shared with me to share with her that I would like to share with you today mm -hmm. is instead of running away from it or trying to hide it, mm -hmm. acknowledge it. Yes. Give that baby a name. Yes. The Holy Spirit Give that baby you. an identity yes. to say, your little life was so short, Yes, but you mattered. Yes. And I'm your mama. That's it. That's and I'm proud of you. Yes. And I want the world to know this yes. little girl that I'm working with, she said, I went to work the other day. And she said, this lady asked me, well, do you have children? And she said, I started to say, no. I, she said, I stopped and I said, as a matter of fact, I do. Mm -hmm. I have two children. Yes. I don't have them with me on this earth right now, mm -hmm. but I will be with them again in heaven. But mm -hmm. yes, yes, thank you for asking. I have two children. That's and just by special. acknowledging that, there's That's so it. much healing. healing. So much healing. And 
Our time is almost gone again today. I can't believe it. We could talk for hours and hours and hours with you, just sitting here with uh -huh. you. But I believe that God wants to, I mean, I don't, I don't just believe it. I know he wants to heal you, whatever that is. It may uh -huh. not be abortion. It may not be miscarriage. It may be whatever it is in your life. Yes. He knows. The Holy Spirit is there and he wants to go into the, your innermost being he wants to heal you from any shame or guilt you know one thing I've always worked hard on and I will say I've worked at it is when people have tried to put shame on me yeah. or guilt on me about whatever it is in life I'm like wait a minute uh -uh. Uh -uh, you don't sorry you don't get to do that no. I've worked with the Lord on that you know Holy Spirit has helped me so much throughout the years or once in a while that fleeting thought will you know oh you shouldn't be yeah. speaking that or tell that or whatever but God is so faithful and he's right there with us he's there with you today and he wants to heal you yeah. so that you can live you know that Jesus said that he came to give us life abundantly on this earth. Yes. It doesn't just mean when we get to heaven, exactly. we're going to have this, you know, of course we're going to have, it's mm -hmm. heaven. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to think about. And today, if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of all of your sins, make him the master. Your master means owner, possessor. You're everything. He wants to be there for you. He has plans for you that you can't even imagine. I would have yeah. never imagined, Susan, the plans he had for us. No. But he has plans. He has a hope. He has a future. All things really do work together really for do. good. They really, they really do. do work together for good. How can the loss of my children work together for good? God uses it, so maybe I could help you, yeah. help you go walk through it. And one day we'll all be in eternity together as long as we're, we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit lives inside of us to comfort us and guide us. He has plans for you. He has exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all you could ever think or ask or dream or hope or wish. He really does. Even And sometimes I have a hard time when I'm going through rough patches, sometimes hanging on to that He's or going to the other side. Everything. Usually. Yeah. And then yeah. usually you get, you get past it. You do. And you look at it and you go, wow, God, you're, <laughs> you're good. And he gets all the glory. And so today, let that be for you. Um, one thing I'm excited about, too, it's just a little it's a little heart's desire is that I was able to work with some amazing scientists and yes. chemists. And we created together over the last couple of years. And now it's a reality <laughs> um, through a lot of hard work is LL Skin Care line. And I am so excited about this, Susan. I'm going to walk over to my, my set here and tell you real quick in our closing moments. I know it's a little tough transition, but Susan, I do have a little gift for you, believe oh, it or not. Oh. Over here, I have a complete set of oh. LL Skin Care line. Thank and you. And I want you to get uh. set too. This is our Christmas Thank season. You. If there is anything that you could get yourself for Christmas, which I believe in getting yourself a little something, I would say to get this skincare that I really worked hard at with the developers, the chemist, and all of that for a couple years for you and for me, because I do believe in taking good care of our skin. And so what we have is we have the daily facial cleanser and day and night cleanser, and also the toner, which is just beautiful. I just love the toner. And you just pat it on your face and it's just, it's a lovely thing. Also, the day and night moisturizer. You don't need a separate nighttime moisturizer, so day and night. And the anti-aging eye cream, which you know, ladies, as we age, especially when, like, when you get around 40-ish, you start seeing those little fine lines and wrinkles. You're like, where did those come from? <laughs> you just put that on. But it, I have so many testimonies. And if you have any testimonies, go ahead and send them to me. I'd love to hear from you. A lot of the women that have been using this product absolutely love it like I do. So all of this for a gift of just $162, um, which normally was $250. But I asked Maricela, can we do something special for Christmas time? So you can receive two, two kits for $275. Just call 1-888-777-3530 or go to ptlshop.com forward slash life with Lori and all of the proceeds go to help 
for the operating expenses for Lori's house, which is a place to save the unborn mm. and their mamas too. Mm. And you've, if you haven't seen some of my shows with the girls from Lori's house, you need to get that PTL app and go and watch those shows, holding their precious babies yeah. that they didn't abort, that they have with them right now. And all those proceeds, anything you purchase from Life with Lori will help with the operating expenses of Lori's house. So please go to the phone, 1-888-777-3530, or better yet, go to ptlshop.com forward slash Life with Lori, and go ahead and order something. So, Susan, here you go. You get uh -huh. your skincare. I hey, love you. you. Isn't she amazing? Mm, you have no idea you. how wonderful it is to have a friend like this, and I'm praying that God will give you a friend like Susan is to me. So, for now, I want to say I love you. Thank you for watching, Susan. Thank you. Thank for coming and pressing through when at the last minute I was going to call you. Do you love your skin here? I'm so excited for you See, to this use this is the fun part. We go to heavy things, but this is so fun oh, and amazing. Do. Oh, you should yes. hear us. You I'm so hear, excited. You should hear us when we're giggling and laughing. <laughs> Maybe, listen to that laugh. Susan's a singer too. Oh, I do. I have, I have so many stories. Just when I look into your eyes, <laughs> I think of the bus routes. We're, I know we're closing out. Give me the cue, Ryan, when I have to go. Listen, we used to go down to the inner city. It was hot. It was <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona, 110 degrees. It was dirty. The projects were, oh. But I'll tell you what, I was so tired coming home. And back then, I didn't know I had hepatitis had C. Hep C did you? That's right, I had hep C. That's no. another story. I'll tell you all about <laughs> that later. <laughs> another, another day. But I didn't know I had it. But I know we worked hard yeah. every Saturday, you know. And I would literally lay on Susan's lap on our ride Her head home. head was in my lap. And yeah. she would sing hymns to yeah. me. And I would just feel the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit on that bus mm. route, heading home, back up to the big church in the nice area of town oh after <laughs> being down there with all the little ghetto yeah. kids. And little did we know those ghetto kids would end up, many of them becoming my kids, and now a few of them running the ministry. Yeah. Isn't God good? He's so good. He's good. He's faithful. He's, He's good. good all the time. So good. I'm so excited for what he has for you. So stay close to him. Like Jim always <laughs> says, stay close to Jesus. Yeah. I love you. Thank you for coming, Susan. Oh, thank you. Woo! Yay! Excited. <laughs> Thank you for watching the broadcast with Lori Graham Baker. To help support our broadcast ministry through the purchase of any of the items shown, please call 1-888-777-3530. That toll-free number again is 1-888-777-3530. Or you can go online to www.ptlshop.com forward slash Life with Lori. Thank you for your prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world.